The Swift Programming Language, 5.6 edition, book copyrighted by Apple and made available under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Inheritance. A class can inherit methods, properties, and other characteristics from another class. When one class inherits from another, the inheriting class is known as a subclass, and the class it inherits from is known as its superclass. Inheritance is a fundamental behavior that differentiates classes from other types in Swift. Classes in Swift can call and access methods, properties, and subscripts belonging to their superclass and can provide their own overriding versions of those methods, properties, and subscripts to refine or modify their behavior. Swift helps to ensure your overrides are correct by checking that the override definition has a matching superclass definition. Classes can also add property observers to inherited properties in order to be notified when the value of a property changes. Property observers can be added to any property regardless of whether it was originally defined as a stored or computed property. Defining a base class. Any class that does not inherit from another class is known as a base class. Note, Swift classes do not inherit from a universal base class. Classes you define without specifying a superclass automatically become base classes for you to build upon. The example below defines a base class called vehicle. This base class defines a stored property called current speed with a default value of 0, 0.0, inferring a property type of double. The current speed properties value is used by a read-only computed string property called description to create a description of the vehicle. The vehicle base class also defines a method called make noise. This method does not actually do anything for a base vehicle instance, but will be customized by subclasses of vehicle later on. You create a new instance of vehicle with initializer syntax, which is written as a type name followed by empty parentheses. Having created a new vehicle instance, you can access its description property to print a human readable description of the vehicle's current speed. The vehicle class defines common characteristics for an arbitrary vehicle, but is not much use in itself. To make it more useful, you need to refine it to describe more specific kinds of vehicles. Subclassing. Subclassing is the act of basing a new class on an existing class. The subclass inherits characteristics from the existing class, which you then refine. You can also add new characteristics to the subclass. To indicate that a subclass has a superclass, write the subclass name before the superclass name separated by a colon. This example defines a subclass called bicycle with a superclass of vehicle. The new bicycle class automatically gains all the characteristics of vehicle, such as its current speed and description properties and its make noise method. In addition to the characteristics it inherits, the bicycle class defines a new stored property, has basket, with the default value of false, inferring a type of bool for the property. By default, any new bicycle instance you create will not have a basket. You can set the has basket property to true for a particular bicycle instance after that instance is created. You can also modify the inherited current speed property of a bicycle instance and query the instance's inherited description property. Subclasses can themselves be subclassed. The next example creates a subclass of bicycle for a two-seater bicycle known as a tandem. Tandem inherits all of the properties and methods from bicycle, which in turn inherits all of the properties and methods from vehicle. The tandem subclass also adds a new stored property called current number of passengers with a default value of zero. If you create an instance of tandem, you can work with any of its new and inherited properties and query the read-only description property it inherits from vehicle. Overriding. A subclass can provide its own custom implementation of an instance method, type method, instance property, type property, or subscript that it would otherwise inherit from a superclass. This is known as overriding. To override a characteristic that would otherwise be inherited, you prefix your overriding definition with the override keyword. Doing so clarifies that you intend to provide an override and have not provided a matching definition by mistake. Overriding by accident can cause unexpected behavior, and any overrides without the override keyword are diagnosed as an error when your code is compiled. The override keyword also prompts the Swift compiler to check that your overriding class's superclass, 
or one of its parents has a declaration that matches the one you provided for the override. This check ensures that your overriding definition is correct. Accessing superclass methods, properties, and subscripts. When you provide a method, property, or subscript override for a subclass, it is sometimes useful to use the existing superclass implementation as part of your override. For example, you can refine the behavior of that existing implementation or store a modified value in an existing inherited variable. Where this is appropriate, you can access the superclass version of a method, property, or subscript by using the super prefix. An overridden method named some method can call the superclass version of some method by calling super.sum method within the overriding method implementation. An overridden property called some property can access the superclass version of some property as super.sum property within the overriding getter or setter implementation. An overridden subscript for some index can access the superclass version of the same subscript as super sum index from within the overriding subscript implementation. Overriding methods. You can override an inherited instance or type method to provide a tailored or alternative implementation of the method within your subclass. This example defines a new subclass of vehicle called train, which overrides the make noise method that train inherits from vehicle. If you create a new instance of train and call its make noise method, you can see that the train subclass version of the method is called. Overriding properties. You can override an inherited instance or type property to provide your own custom getter and setter for that property or to add property observers to enable the overriding property to observe when the underlying property value changes. Overriding property getters and setters. You can provide a custom getter and setter, if appropriate, to override any inherited property, regardless of whether the inherited property is implemented as a stored or computed property at source. The stored or computed nature of an inherited property is not known by a subclass. It only knows that the inherited property has a certain name and type. You must always state both the name and the type of the property you are overriding to enable the compiler to check that your override matches a superclass property with the same name and type. You can present an inherited read-only property as a read-write property by providing both a getter and setter in your subclass property override. You cannot, however, present an inherited read-write property as a read-only property. Note, if you provide a setter as part of a property override, you must also provide a getter for that override. If you do not want to modify the inherited property's value within the overriding getter, you can simply pass through the inherited value by returning super.sum property from the getter, where sum property is the name of the property you are overriding. This example defines a new class called car, which is a subclass of vehicle. The car class introduces a new stored property called gear with a default integer value of 1. The car class also overrides the description property it inherits from vehicle to provide a custom description that includes the current gear. The override of the description property starts by calling super.description, which returns the vehicle class's description property. The car class's version of description then adds some extra text onto the end of this description to provide information about the current gear. If you create an instance of car class and set its gear and current speed properties, you can see that its description property returns the tailored description defined within the car class. Overriding property observers. You can use property overriding to add property observers to an inherited property. This enables you to be notified when the value of an inherited property changes, regardless of how that property was originally implemented. For more information on property observers, see property observers. Note, you cannot add property observers to inherited constant stored properties or inherited read-only computed properties. The value of these properties cannot be set, and so it is not appropriate to provide a will set or did set implementation as part of an override. Note also that you cannot provide both an overriding setter and an overriding property observer for the same property. If you want to observe changes to a property's value, and you are already providing a custom setter for that property, you can simply observe any value changes from within the custom setter. This example defines a new class called automatic car, which is a subclass of car. 
The automatic car class represents a car with an automatic gearbox, which automatically selects an appropriate gear to use based on the current speed. Whenever you set the current speed property of an automatic car instance, the properties did set observer sets the instant gear property to an appropriate choice of gear for the new speed. Specifically, the property observer chooses a gear that is the new current speed value divided by 10 rounded down to the nearest integer plus one. A speed of 35.0 produces a gear of four. Preventing overrides. You can prevent a method, property, or subscript from being overridden by marking it as final. Do this by writing the final modifier before the method, property, or subscript's introducer keyword, such as final var, final func, final class func, and final subscript. Any attempt to override a final method, property, or subscript in a subclass is reported as a compile time error. Methods, properties, or subscripts that you add to a class in an extension can also be marked as final within the extension's definition. You can mark the entire class as final by writing the final modifier before the class keyword in its class definition, final class. Any attempt to subclass a final class is reported as a compile time error.